Learning over parameterized neural network going beyond the neural tangent kernel. This is a joint work with Hong Yang Zhang and Tang Yu Ma. So, what is over parameterization or over capacity in deep learning? Over parameterization usually means that by having much more parameters in a neural network than necessary. And here, necessary typically means that either more parameters than the number of training data or more parameters, much more parameters than the minimal number of parameters required to represent the target function. And by having that much of more parameters in neural network, it actually improves the performance of the neural network, both the performance of the training and testing. Okay, so the large neural net, much larger than necessary, usually performs better than small network. Now, over parameterization has been used essentially everywhere in deep learning. And in this work, we look at the most simple, perhaps the textbook example of over parameterization. And this textbook example is super simple. It's just saying given an unknown target network F star, which is a two layer neural network with value activation functions. And here X is from the dimension D and WIs are just also normal vectors and AIs are minus one and one. And given n training data points, uh, Xi, F star of Xi, where each Xi star sample from Gaussian distribution. And if you use a learner network of form of the same form as the target network, then uh, for L2 loss, if you train, uh, if you learn the target network using stochastic gradient design, starting from random initialization, then the training process does not work, which means that this uh, stochastic gradient design process for the learner will stack and a very bad local minimum. Uh, on the other hand, using a learner network of form fx, which is equal to summation of i equal to 1 up to m of ai value of wi times x, where i m is much, much larger than d, so I have much more parameters than necessary, then running stochastic gradient design over the parameters in the learner network, starting from random initialization, the training does convert to the global minima, and it actually generalizes. Okay, so just like the picture, we have a target network of size D that can general, generate the labeling function. However, using a learner network of the same size, the training doesn't really work for a properly parameterized learner. However, for an over-parameterized learner, the training actually works and the generalization actually works. Okay, so this is a folklore example and formally reported in some of the prior works. Now the question is, can we prove it? Okay, can we formally prove that over-parameterization does help in this extremely simple example? And what are the fundamental reasons behind the lower parameterization in training this learner network to learn this particular target function? And let us start with reviewing some prior works in over parameterization, which are fundamentally different from this work. And the most famous uh, prior work is the so-called over parameterization and the neural tangent kernel approach. And this approach says that when the following holds, condition holds, which is over parameterization, polynomial size over parameterization, and certain proper initialization, and the small learning rate, then learning a neural network with this uh, much more number of parameters than the number of training data uh, using stochastic gradient design actually reduces to learning over the neural tangent kernel of this neural network, which is a convex learning problem. Okay. However, as a corollary of the previous work, a neural tangent kernel cannot learn a target network with value activation efficiently. Okay. And remember, recall in our simple example, the target network is a ReLU network, and the ReLU activation has such a high complexity that beyond the power of 
uh, Eurotangent kernel. Okay, so this simple example cannot ex be explained by the theorem of a Eurotangent kernel. And here is the uh, primary result of our paper, which we actually proved that over parameterization helps here. So given a learner network of M with much larger size than, uh, than necessary, given polynomially many training data points, and then uh, stochastic gradient design starting from random initialization uh, with small learning rate actually reaches a good generalization error efficiently. Okay. So what is the difference of neural tangent kernel and our work? Well, the difference is actually uh, the initialization. We use a random Gaussian initialization of size AI follow from Gaussian zero and D over M and WI uh, follow from normal zero and one over M times identity. Okay, and this is closely related to the initialization used in practice. On the other hand, a neural tangent kernel would initialize typically AI uh, proportional to Gaussian zero and one. This is much larger than the initialization used in practice. Okay, so our results is not included, is not captured by the neural tangent kernel approach, and also our result is much more powerful. Okay, we can learn a random target network where no neural tangent kernel can learn that. And what is the tool of our work? We actually in introduce a new tool with uh, that we call a polysized coupling with the non-convex infinite neural process of K. Okay. What is this tool? This tool is just with sufficient, which means polynomial size over parameterization. The gradient design of the network uh, of this over parameterized network is actually simulating an infinite neural gradient design process. Okay, and this is infinite neural process is not convex, so it's not neural tangent kernel process, but still it has a benign landscape which allow us to analyze the convergence. Okay, and now the technical challenge is why the infinite neural process has a better training performance and how does the simulation works with only poly size over parameterization. Okay, and to understand the infinite neural process for simplicity, we really parameterize AI with the norm of WI. And so we ignore the linear terms, the population laws of the fx minus f star of x is given by this tensor decomposition objective. Okay, so we have a zero order term, which means that the norm of the WI, the total norm of WI must match the summation of AI star and we also have another tensor decomposition objective which controls the shape of WI and WI star. Okay, so sigma i here is the Hermit coefficient of ReLU and WI bar is a normalized version of WI. And at initialization, each WI follow from Gaussian zero identity over M, so the infinite, we are actually couple uh, the finite neural laws with the infinite neural laws, which is given by the same thing, but we replace the summation by the expectation. Okay, so for a distri distribution over P, we look at the laws given by the expectation of uh, the WI, the difference between WI and WI star. Okay, so at the initialization, we look at the distribution, which is normal, zero, and identity. Okay, so what we consider as a infinite neural process is essentially each step, we just update the probability distribution via gradient descent step over W. Okay, so for each neuron sample from P, we actually update it using a gradient descent process uh, using the gradient of this infinite neural loss. Okay, 
So for this infinite neural laws, it actually contains two terms. The first term is the zero order and the second order term to two types of terms. The first type is the zero and second order terms. And these are more like the PCA type of terms in the tensor decomposition objective. They cannot be used to identify the true WI star uniquely. Okay. But then there are the fourth order and above terms, which are more like tensor decomposition objective. They can, they are the tensor type of terms that can identify WI star uniquely. Okay. So we show that the following process of the infinite neural gradient descent dynamic, which has a benign landscape. And during the training process, uh, after a very small number of iterations, the zero and the second order term will become pretty small. Okay, so it will become smaller than the first order, the, the fourth order term. And then the gradient descent process enters a tensor phase and the tensor decomposition process over the fourth order and above tensor term can be used to identify WI star correctly. Okay, and this is an infinite neuron process. Now the question is how do we move from the infinite neuron process to the polynomial size finite neuron process? The infinite neuron process is something like we first have W and then we have T1 of W, so we have T2 of W, and this transformation TI is defined via the gradient descent process on the infinite neuron laws. And we also have the finite neural process, which has theta t of i, which is defined on the gradient descent process with a finite neuron and and the empirical loss instead of infinite neuron and population loss. Okay, now the question is our, our main observation is if w is close to wi at certain iterations, is it true that the transformation also preserves the closeness? Okay. And we consider it's actually the first step, which we have W to the T1 of W and W to T2 uh, of W. Okay, we, cons we analyze the process using the three-step analysis which is we first move um, wi, move wi to t1 of wi, so we first move, uh, we do a gradient descent step on the infinite neural laws, and then we move from t1 of wi to height of t1 of wi, which is we move from the infinite neuron to finite neuron, okay? So there is a step of the error caused by polynomial size over parameterization, which is the error caused by moving uh, from the population or the uh, true distribution P to the empirical version of IID samples from P. And then we also have the last step, which we move from this uh, population loss to empirical loss due to the polynomial number of samples. And the key observation is that the difference between the over of the overparameterization arrow is one over root m and the sample arrow is one over root n. And our main observation is that this one over root m is the role of polysize over parameterization. As long as we have polynomially many parameters, we can drive the arrow to be inverse polynomially small, and that is sufficient to couple between the infinite neural process and the finite neural process, and then we can show the final convergence.